From medical measurements to industrial control, a semiconductor device can be used as a switch, very quick in operation and very small. This one will switch 100 amperes. Because no moving contacts are involved, the method is sometimes known as contactless or static switching. As a demonstration, we will first switch on a five horsepower direct current electric motor using a contactor. The moving contact is pulled onto the stationary one by this coil when it is energized from this push button circuit. Contrast that with this. This is a semiconductor device known as a controlled rectifier. It is very much like a large transistor. It has a control electrode circuit, which when energized with a small current from this push button control, will pass a large current through the device and the motor runs. In practice, semiconductor devices can be used in circuit networks arranged to respond to signals from a process so as to keep it under control, bring in an operation, or modify it according to a prearranged plan. In steel rolling, for example, not only does each reduction in size of the billet have to be done with great accuracy, some operations require absolute precision of timing like this flying shear. As the red hot billet is reduced, it is accelerated rapidly and its position is sensed by photoelectric cells within the stands of the mill. Mechanical relays couldn't respond quickly enough to their signals. Static switches can. They operate in a few thousandths of a second and the shear chops at exactly the right moment. These moving contacts control our telephone circuits. They are mechanical switches worked by electrical impulses. Through intricate networks, they connect one subscriber to another in a few seconds. Engineers are now developing semiconductor devices to replace these, and connections can be completed in a fraction of the time. Again, because transistors used as switches operate in a few thousandths of a second. Semiconductor-operated exchanges are now actually being tried out. In this application, as in so many others, the small size of the transistor is a feature essential to the new uses it can establish. Transistors used as switches are also an essential part of a modern computer. A computer does its work because within it are thousands of circuits, each requiring the equivalent of a switch that can be on or off, according to how the bits of information being fed into the computer have to be handled. Computers nowadays can use up to 50,000 or more switching devices. A computer with a few rolls of coded tape can, in a matter of minutes, carry out a multitude of calculations which would take human fingers and human brains, perhaps a room full of them, several days. Wages, production, accounts can all be dealt with at tremendous speed. And not just the routine calculations of office work. A roll of tape punched by the computer may in seconds do what would take a research scientist months of complex mathematics. A revolutionary increase in speed. And only this kind of speed makes control of rockets in their trajectories possible. So, semiconductors are creating a revolution in our technology, and in turn they are demanding a revolution in manufacturing techniques.
for all semiconductor devices depend on meticulous control of the purity of the minute squares of material they start from. An absolute control of cleanliness at all later stages in their manufacture. The factory has had to become a laboratory and its workers learn completely new methods. Here transistors are being made. Microscopic blobs of indium are placed on each side of the germanium slice. And after heating in a furnace to diffuse in some of the indium, we have the basic element of a transistor. Connecting wires only a few thousandths of an inch thick are pushed into the indium blobs to make connections to the semiconductor surfaces. These wires are then welded to the three external connectors. With a miniature argon arc, the cap is sealed on and the transistor thus protected in an inert atmosphere. And research continues into an increasing variety of semiconductor materials, seeing how they behave under all kinds of conditions, finding out more of their inner structure. Here, intense cold and a strong magnetic field. Here, with hot and cold probes, they are exploring the depth to which impurities have diffused to find out more about the fundamental nature of the PN junction. Here, they are passing heat through pieces of semiconductor to find out how its flow can create and control a flow of electricity. And research into making new semiconductor materials. For remember that the final material has to have a controlled impurity content of only one part in perhaps several millions. And ever more highly developed techniques of purification have to be employed. Here a new form of zone refining. What will be the outcome of researches like these? Better materials and improved devices without doubt. Larger power rectifiers and smaller transistors. Micro miniaturization and solid state circuitry. A dozen transistors or more with their associated circuits in a piece of semiconductor no larger than a sixpence. But are we learning to do more with semiconductors than just make devices? We are. There is one line of work of striking interest to those who make electricity. Huge power stations like these generate our power. From coal, oil and nuclear energy, we turn water into steam the steam turns our turbines, and the turbines drive our generators. Are we likely to make power from semiconductors? Remember the silicon rod joined directly to a microammeter. One end hot, the other cool at room temperature. Current flowed through the microammeter. This, in a minute way, is the generation of power direct from heat through semiconduction. If we take special semiconductor materials, take lots of pieces and join them so that half the junctions can be heated, and the other half kept cool, then we have made a small generator working on this principle. Our big power stations give us power up to 500 megawatts or more. This one is only five watts. Our big power stations work at efficiencies rising 40%. This one is only 7%. But it works. No steam, no rotating machinery. I wonder whether we will generate power from semiconductors. It is possible to think of reversing the process and removing the heat source Instead of using this as a generator of current, send current through it. 
we would find that one set of junctions would get cold and the other set hot. This is known as the Peltier effect. It is as if the moving electric charges transfer energy from one set of junctions to the other. We could therefore unroll this, flatten it out and make it considerably larger and build it into the wall of the house. We would fix radiating fins to the junctions on the outside and pass the current so that these became cold. The ones inside would become hot and warm the house. In the summer, reversing the current, these get cold and cool the house. Using the same principle, we would cool a much smaller volume and make a refrigerator. Semiconductor junctions, when used in this way, are not acting as generators, but as heat pumps. Today, devices like these are only just possible, but sometime in the future, they may become really practicable. But whatever we may add to the present achievements of semiconductor technology, one thing we can say with assurance, the efforts of scientists all over the world are giving us an understanding of semiconductors and how to use them. And this knowledge is worthy of standing alongside that of electromagnetic induction, the all-important discovery of that great man of electrical science, Michael Faraday.